Wow, babe. I love it when you're wearing that tight, sexy leather. Come here. I want to capture those sexy curves on camera. <coughs> what were you guys thinking? Now that this blade is naked, you can see all the nice smooth curves that's built into the blade. It has like a Spartan blade design to it. I'm really digging the looks. The blade is 11 inches long, 5 inch handle, 6 inch blade. The blade features a clip point design, hollow grind with a recurved cutting edge. It's a quarter inch thick with a 90 degree spline. Uh, it does come with jimping back here. It is a little sharp for my taste. It also comes with a little divot to strike a fire steel. I don't know why they would put that there when you can easily do that with the back of the spine. I just wish that they would just flatten this area out, extend the jimping up to here, and it will feel a little bit more comfortable for me carving instead of having that little hump jab into my finger. This is a full tang knife with micarta handle skills. Uh, I'm digging that pattern that's on the micarta. It has red insert sleeves, striking pommel, two lanyard holes, and it also comes with a friction bearing. This is a friction bearing done right. Unlike other blades where the, it's just a little dinky divot, this friction bearing is nice and deep. Now I do have medium sized hands, um, but this blade feels extremely comfortable in my hands. With that curved back shape, it really does uh, make it feel comfortable. But for guys who has larger hands, you might not have a whole lot of real estate left in the handle. The steel used is Baller N695, not to be confused with N680 or N690, both of which better steels than this N695. N695 is just a fancier term for, wait for it, 440C. Baller is the company who brought you the famous LMAX. Believe me when I say they know how to make a good 440C. Kudaman hardened the N695 to the hardness of 59 to 61 on the hardness scale, which is pretty much the max of 440C. Kudaman is a Spanish company. Their knives has a really unique design that I'm not a big fan of usually, but this blade just begged me to take it home. Just look at how beautiful this blade is. It takes a lot of craftsmanship to put that hollow grind design and recurve shape together. Both are extremely hard for knife makers to produce, unless they are using robots. When purchasing the JJ SK2, well, that's a mouthful, it comes with two packages. The first one is the M version, which only comes with the leather sheath and paracord. This is the MC version, which comes with a extra pocket, which gets mounted on top and held on by the belt loop. The pocket comes with a fire steel and a 1200 grid sharpening stone. Behind the sharpening stone, it's a signaling mirror. And it also comes with a sundial ruler that's kind of engraved in the mirror. Um, it's kind of nice because if you know your north, then you can tell the time. If you know the time, then you can know where north is. This fire steel striker was attached to the fire steel with some rope. I took that off and made it into a lanyard. Call me cheap. It also comes with a small multi-tool 
I mean, this is great for putting into your wallet or something. Uh, it's great for opening boxes, letters. It does have a semi-sharp edge. Um, bottle opener. Uh, it does have a small saw here. I don't know what these things are for. Um, they, there is a hex key where you can sort of undo bolts and nuts. I wouldn't use this thing for bolts and nuts so uh, just because there's so many sharp edges around the outside. It does have a ruler and I'm thinking this is a um, angle meter of some sort. Pretty neat. This sheath is one of the better built sheaths I've seen for a while coming from a knife manufacturer. The leather is nice and thick. Great job on the stitching. And it has loads of latching points. I mean, you got latching holes here, here, and here. Belt loop. I mean, this thing is solid. I would put it up against any leather sheath that Bark River has to offer and I would take this over Bark Rivers any day. Just one thing to keep in mind though, when you're putting the blade in and out, you gotta lift this flap out of the way or else the knife will cut your leather. When this thing is locked down, this thing is still pretty new, so leather's still kind of tough. When this thing is locked down, there's no rattle. The blade is not going anywhere, no play at all. I would not recommend mounting this blade upside down because the blade just falls out. No friction fit here, guys. That pretty much sums up my review. I believe if you're looking for a mid-range stainless steel survival knife, this knife might be what you're looking for. I have seen sellers selling this blade with different package names and stuff missing from the package. Um, it doesn't state that type of package on Kudaman's website, so I found it kind of weird. And as beautiful and handsome as this blade is, I would not pay anything over $200 for this survival knife. I mean, for a mid-range survival knife, $200 mark is pretty much the maximum of a million to spend on a mid-range blade. Looks does sell, but it's not everything. I will be doing a field review on this blade and put it up against some survival task and give you my final thoughts on how this blade performs. If you'd like to follow up with the review, please subscribe and you will be notified when the video gets uploaded. Like usual, please like my video if you enjoy watching it. Um, if you don't like what you see, hit thumbs down twice. Until next time.